So all of these things are the same. They're all different ways of slicing up the same pie. Okay? And taking these both together um, allows us to deal with things like this. And also allows us to deal with, now, this is one which um, I sort of mentioned to some of you before, but it's such a famous result um, that I'm going to show all of you. Okay, so here's an example of an integral that's going to use both of these properties. Okay, here it is. Okay, so this is a very, um, this is a very famous integral, and by the end of this, you will see why. Okay. Now, before we get started on this, I want to know what this thing is. What does it look like? Just think about the integrand for me, okay? Hmm. As x approaches zero, as x approaches zero, what is happening to this to the um, to the denominator? I should say. As x approaches zero, what's the denominator doing? The denominator is also approaching zero. Yes. So therefore, as x approaches 0, this thing is approaching infinity. But of course, I have to say, as it approaches, because you can't evaluate it at 0, can you? Right? In fact, let's just draw a little picture of here. Yeah, that's fine. Because of that square root of x that's on the denominator, you've got an asymptote there. That's not cool. Okay? Um, you might think, ooh, I might have an asymptote from here as well, but you don't need to worry about that. Why not? This guy's not even defined like for that for the negative part. The, o, the domain for this is x is greater than zero only because of the square root. So I've got that. That's fine. Okay. Tell me about what happens now as x approaches infinity. What's happening to the denominator? It's becoming really, really small. The denominator? The denominator is just going to infinity. Yeah. The oh, denominator. Oh, yeah. So therefore, the whole function is getting really, really small. Okay. So therefore, and there's no. You know, something, no, nothing to stop that, okay? So, you've got that. Now, I'm going to do a gross oversimplification of this. You're looking at something like this. I mean, I've drawn it. It looks exactly like the regular, you know, the rectangular hyperbola. But the curvature is different enough that we get a different result out of this, okay? So, what am I interested in? I'm interested in this area. The entire area bounded by not just the x-axis, but the y-axis as well. So, um, this, this here is an uncomfortable way of writing things, right? Because we know it's like, you shouldn't be able to do that, right? This clearly implies limit notation, okay? So what I'm going to take advantage of is this line in here. I am going to break up this function into two pieces, right? And that will give me two different boundaries that will have two different limits, okay? So um, what's convenient to me, like I want to choose a value in the middle that's going to be nice. And when you, <coughs> excuse me, have a look at this, it just so happens that choosing one is a nice convenient value between naught and infinity. You can choose anything if you like, but it'll just make it easy for me to evaluate once I have a primitive function. Okay. So I'm gonna go from um, naught to one, but instead of writing naught to one, I'm gonna use this limitation because I really actually can't get to naught, right? You see that? <coughs> so I'm gonna say, let's go from say, u to one, okay? and see what happens as u approaches zero. Okay, so this is my, my first part of the interval. It's one on x plus one root x with respect to x. There's naught to one, kind of. Now I'm gonna do one to infinity, kind of. Okay, so I'm gonna go limit as u approaches infinity, but I've now got the upper boundary is the one that I'm replacing with the limit. So now I'm going 1 to u, and it's the same integrand. Okay. Now, stepping off to the side for a moment, because this doesn't look like a standard form, I'm going to need to make a substitution of some kind that will make this easy to integrate. So, would someone like to make a suggestion? What could I let u equal to, or theta, maybe I shouldn't have chosen u. What should I, what substitution should I choose here in order to make this easier to integrate? X plus 1 equals u. X plus 1 equals u. Okay, so my first choice is, my first choice is, like I've got a product that's down here on the denominator, so I think it's going to be one of these. Okay, that's not a bad guess. Now if I went for x plus 1, what would happen? Um, I would do my du on dx in order to change my variable integration. What is du on dx? 1. It's 1. Well, that's fine, I have a 1 there. But once you replace this, how are you going to replace this root x? 
what's it going to be? Yeah, so what you're doing, in fact, is if you say, don't, don't write this down. If you let u equal x plus 1, right, then in order to get something for this, well, what are we going to do here? You're going to turn this into u minus 1 equals x. So then root x equals root of u minus 1. So in fact, what I have now ended up with is actually not much better than what I, what I started with, yeah? Because I'm now going to be integrating, instead of this, I'll be integrating uh, u times the square root of u minus 1 which is essentially the same problem, okay? So that's not gonna work very much for me. And one of the ways you could have known that it's not gonna usually work is because if your du on dx equals one, that means essentially there's no difference between what you're differentiating, your, what you're integrating with respect to now versus what you're integrating with respect to if you choose u, okay? Which is why even though it's like, oh, it's a bit of a pain when you do du on dx and it, there's a minus or it turns into treat functions or whatever, that's actually the whole point. If there's no substantial change, then there's no substantial advantage. Okay?